The smith, the mighty man, is he with large and sinewy hands. And the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands. Longfellow's blacksmith was a typical one. A smith is by necessity a physically powerful man. He has spent years in perfecting his craft. Metal craft is an old and respected profession. Yet, until a short time ago, few improvements had been made in forming pieces not produced in mass quantities. Until very recently, parts which serve as patterns for mass productions and unique parts which were too seldom used to be mass produced had to be formed using just this method. Bending in this manner, even making use of high temperatures to increase the malleability of metals, involves tremendous human energy. This is the same stock the blacksmith was shaping, 3 16 angle iron. Great force will always be required in bending metal. Today, however, human energy is no longer necessary in developing that force. This angle iron is being shaped cold and in less than one-tenth of the time it would take to do it hot on the anvil. Most important, about the same amount of physical energy is being used to bend this piece as is required to operate a lathe a comparable period of time. Two qualities were made inherent to this bender. First, it features efficiency both in design and in operation. The bender's simplicity of design is obvious. An indication of its operating ease is the simplicity of this manual, which is furnished with each machine and will be sent upon request by the manufacturers of the machine. It explains and illustrates all standard bending setups, specifications, and capacities. Following the setups illustrated in the manual, almost anyone can become a valuable operator within a short period of time. Also essential to this machine's efficiency is adaptability. The bends shown here are only some of the many which are possible on this bender. All these bends were made by exercising this theory. If a force can be completely controlled as it is applied to a metal part which has extreme pressure exerted equally over the entire circumference, almost any bend is possible. Here is a two-inch pipe which has been cut and coupled to go around an eight-inch wall. If the pipe could have been bent to a ten-inch radius, two elbows and a coupling could have been saved. Also, the time it took to make two cuts and four sets of threads could have been saved. So, all right, let's bend it. We have all the essentials, stabilizer, fulcrum, leverage, and force. No, it doesn't work. Hardly a uniform bend. The pipe crimps and flattens. Now let's try it on the bender. First, the proper size die is chosen. The groove of the forming die is oval shaped. As the pipe is bent, it will wedge into the groove and will cause the pressure to be applied equally on the entire circumference of the pipe. The dies are placed between the frames. and the pipe is placed in bending position. Pressure is applied and the pipe is fed one inch to two inches per pull until the required bend has been made. It took only seconds to reset the bender from the last operation it was set up to do and no wrenches were used in resetting it. That should do it. It's the universal wrenchless bender, and this is the job it does on a two-inch pipe. Now, let's see just how universal it is. Our next operation is to form an eye on round stock. 
The manual tells us that the machine's capacity for this operation is 5 eighths mild steel or its equivalent. Following the pictured illustrations in the manual, we have connected the frames with the center pin, placed the U-pin with roller in the second hole of the main frame. We've placed the slot of the I-bolt bending dog on the flathead pin. and the eye pin is formed. Now using the same setup, we'll make a chain link. The usefulness of this easily formed part is obvious. The machine's capacity in U-bolt bending is one and one-fourth inch low carbon steel. The cam die will determine the size of the finished U-bolt. If the ends aren't coming out even, lock the short side and pull the long side through. A ring gauge and stop gauge may be set up for production of identical parts. We're setting up dies and will engage the hold down arms in preparation to bend angle iron flange inward. For production work in this type operation, the hydraulic unit is recommended. Attaching the hydraulic unit takes but a few moments. The manual tells us that the machine can bend up to and including stock two by two by three sixteenths inches. Interchangeable radius blocks offer a wide range of forming specifications. Heavy gauge flat stock bending is